My name is Richard Bradley and I'm a Professor of Philosophy in the Department of Philosophy, Logic and Scientific Method here at the London School of Economics. So I work on decision making, decision making by individuals, groups, collective agents and so on. And I particularly focus on decision making under uncertainty. I'm also interested in kinds of reasoning that we use in order to manage uncertainty, hypothetical reasoning, statistical reasoning and so on. I look at what sort of decision rules are appropriate to use in situations of different kinds of uncertainty. So I've become interested recently in particularly in the problem of what sort of decision rules or decision methods policymakers should use when they're drawing on scientific models to help them make decisions. Scientific models are now used in lots and lots of different areas of policy making, but one in which, which is particularly interesting, what's particularly interesting to me, is the way in which scientific models are used to help policymakers manage the threat of natural catastrophes. Let's take a, the example of earthquakes, perhaps. Um, so here, uh, earthquakes are, well, particularly the large ones, are relatively rare events. It's very difficult to predict um, how frequent and how severe they will be. And uh, so policymakers simply can't rely either on sort of common knowledge about these things or their own expertise. They have to go to scientists, and scientists will produce answers about where and when and how severe by looking at the models that they produce of earthquake activity. These models often uh, draw on data um, about pre previous events of this kind. Uh, the trouble, particularly with natural catastrophes, is that the events that you're most interested in, uh, that is, the most severe ones, so these are the, the earthquakes, for instance, that are going to cause very uh, big damage to your infrastructure, cause a lot of deaths and so on, these happen infrequently, thankfully, but it, this creates a problem for scientists because they don't have a lot of data about events of this kind in order to test and calibrate their models. So in practice, what they do is they build these models based on data regarding uh, events that are much less severe. They're more frequent, so there's more data, but they're much less severe, and then they extrapolate from um, the models that they have of these less severe events to, uh, to projections about the more severe ones. And there's a lot of uncertainty built into that because you have to make lots and lots of assumptions about what the appropriate extrapolation is. So the outcome of this is that when uh, a scientific model is used to deliver, say, a, a projection about how many um, severe earthquakes there will be in a particular region of the world and indeed make models that are used then to calculate what sort of damages follow on from it. Um, they, they produce estimates but these estimates are very uncertain. That is to say we can't be sure that they are an accurate indication of what the real risks are. So there's two different things that policymakers can do in response to this kind of problem. One is to ask more out of scientists. So in a way, this is what scientists can do to help policymakers. Um, they can ask scientists to tell them not just what their best estimate is for how many earthquakes and how severe they are, for instance, but also to tell them what the sort of reasonable range of answers to their questions are. So scientists typically have got one or more working models. Um, they, when they give you a final answer, it may be that they've averaged the answer produced by these different models, or it may be an answer that's obtained by averaging by wiggling around different initial conditions or different parameters in these models. So scientists could simply report the answer that you would get by uh, choosing very specific parameter values or very specific input conditions or focusing on one particular model and reporting the whole set of possible answers that you get by looking at each one of those individually. And that gives then a much richer picture of what science, of the level of scientific understanding of the phenomenon. Because if that, if those estimates are all clustered around one particular value, then you know that, sort of in a way, we have a strong understanding of a fairly of the situation. But if it, if these answers are scattered all over the place, that's an indication that although there might be a best estimate, it's really quite uncertain. So that's the first thing that uh, policymakers can do. The second thing that they can do is devise ways of using that information. So it's one thing to ask for not just a single estimate, but a range of estimates. It's another thing to make good use of that. So they need to devise uh, decision methods that can handle the richer information that they can get from scientists. What policy makers really want to understand when they get these um, estimates from, from the scientists is just how much confidence they can have in them. And so uh, what philosophers can do is they can help 
provide some kind of communication protocol for something like confidence, which doesn't exist at the moment. What scientists do is they provide an estimate of the underlying risk, but they don't provide any kind of information about how much confidence that they have in, the, in their own estimates of that risk. So uh, what would a protocol be like? It would have to be something that would enable policymakers to compare across different situations. They would need to be able to say, ah, this is a case where the scientists are telling me this, but they don't have very much confidence in it, and so I should perhaps be a bit more cautious, and compare that with a situation in which scientists might be reporting what looks like exactly the same numbers, but they're saying there's much more, much, much greater under scientific understanding underpinning these estimates, so they have much more confidence. So, uh, and then in those circumstances, then they can act more boldly. So thought philosophers can help, help do here is design, uh, as it were, almost a language, a protocol, which um, allows, you know, makes reporting in these different areas meaningfully comparable for the policymakers, and so allows them to make different kinds of policy decisions in response to these things.